Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at method overriding in Kotlin. Let's start by creating a class which I'll call machine. We'll say that the machine class has one property which we'll call name and we'll make that of type string. And let's also give it a method. I'll have a method called start and that's just going to do a print line and it's going to say starting dollar name dot dot dot. So we could use that if we create a main function here. Let's say val machine equals machine and let's just call this crusher and then we can call the start method. So machine.start. And if I run that, it works as you would expect. And we've got starting crusher coming out here. Now suppose we create a class called car. And after thinking about it a bit, we realize a car is a machine and it could usefully do with inheriting the properties and methods of the machine class. So we make the car derive from machine. We make it a subclass of machine. Now there's several problems here. One problem is, well, let's hover over the red underlining. This type has a constructor and thus must be initialized here. We've got to do something about that property. So what we can do is have a parameter that's passed to the primary constructor of car, which I'll call name. And then we can just pass name onto machine right here. But we've still got an error. And if I hover over it now, it says this type is final, so cannot be inherited from. And the problem is that by default, remember, classes in Kotlin are final meaning you can't derive subclasses from them. To fix that, we would have to make the machine class open, and then we can do it. Now at the moment, the car class is basically identical to the machine class. It's going to inherit this property, and it's going to inherit this function. So that means I can do something like the following. Let's say val car equals car. Let's call this Ferrari, and then I'll say car.start. And if we run this, it works, starting Ferrari. Now it may be that machine has a whole bunch of properties and methods which car has inherited. And I might look at some of those methods and think, well, I still need a method with the same name and the same parameters, but I would like to change one of those methods a bit. I would like to change what it does. And you can do that via overriding methods. So you might think, well, let's just give car its own start method. Let's actually copy this start method and paste it right here. And you can see straight away I've got red underlining, but let's change this a bit. Let's say for cars, I want to say dollar name car starting instead of saying starting dollar name. So the idea is that when I call car.start, I want this to run. I only want this to run when I'm running the start method on an actual object of the type machine. How do I get this to work? Well, I'm actually almost there. I have to write override here, override, to say that I'm basically changing what this method does. And I have to make this method open with the open keyword. And now that I've added those two keywords, I can override the start method. In other words, I can provide a different implementation for the start method in car. Let's run it. And now you can see that whereas it says starting crusher, for the car we get Ferrari car starting. So overriding methods is very much a key part of object-oriented programming. You might be wondering how much am I really going to use this? And the answer very much depends on what kind of programming you're doing. In some programs, you're constantly overriding methods. In others, you don't really need it. So it just depends on a kind of programming. But it certainly is a very important thing to know about. Okay, so that's it for this video. Until next time, happy coding.